I'm Eric Lanigan, associate producer at Twit, and I'm at the Valley Fair Mall in San Jose at the Apple Store with Steve Wozniak. Hi, Steve. Wow, this is fantastic to be here. I love seeing equipment like this, too. <laughs> now, are you going to be here all night? Um, yes, I am, and it's, it's rough. I've done it before three times, and it's tough by the morning. Oh, man, I'm just dead. I just want to get my whatever it is, iPhone or iPad, and get home. <laughs> and why, why would you, Steve Wozniak, need to wait in line like this? I mean, I would think you could have gotten one weeks in advance, let alone tomorrow, delivered your door for free. I would only do it for an event like this where it's something very, very important to the world and very important in my own life. It's technology. It is a computer. Um, I have such great expectations for how this machine is going to change the world, just like the iPhones. So with all the iPhones, I did the same thing. I stood here in line because I'm afraid if I don't get one, it might be weeks before I can talk about it or compare to other people. What works, what doesn't? What would I like changed about it? And how do you see this change in the world? I see it um, becoming probably the most popular, the most highly sold computer of all in the world in a very short time. And that's to the people who aren't like us. We're high-end technology people who say, oh, I wish it had more, I wish it had more and more, like other computers I have. I'll buy it as a second machine, as a satellite, like my little iPhone. It just synchronizes to my real machine. But there are a lot of people that are going to wind up using a lot more than us. You know, 90% of the people must want this small, simple, I call it a restart. You go back and you say, computers got so complicated. All these things I don't understand about them, and now here's one. Everything I look at makes sense to me. You know, whether it's the weather or the stock quotes, even simple things like that. So I think this is a great restart. Um, iPhone is kind of nice to carry the world with you, the, the whole internet world. But the trouble is, it's tough to navigate web pages and the like, and email isn't quite as explanatory. So now that you've got the full screen, um, it's going to shake things up. And, and how do you plan on using this uh, right, out, right out of the door? I intend to look at, can I make this my primary machine? That I travel with this machine and no other. I may not succeed. I may still want to carry my heavier duty laptop because of the sort of person I am. And carry this as a secondary machine like my, uh, my iPhones. Uh, I mean, I have coats. I have some Scott Eves, and they have big pockets. So I can fit the iPad in it. And, uh, does, it does it fit in the big uh, magazine pocket? But you know what, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to a restaurant and pull over and pull out my whole big laptop, my 17-inch laptop, eat a little food and, and you know, do some computing. Well, now it's a lot simpler. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, you, so you think that for techies, this might be sort of a satellite computer, and, but it might also be the computer for everybody. I, th I think it's going to become the major computer for everybody. What did they say? Germany or Apple, Germany ordered 75 or 85,000 of them and got 300 and some thousand orders already. And I think it's going to be such a surprise. Schools. I've been close to education and education marketing. My wife works for Apple corporate education marketing. I'm probably not allowed to say that. So I probably got her in trouble. But um, the thing is, they have these huge deals that you hear about where a state will buy 70,000 of one brand make computer or a district will buy 22,000 of some make of computer. Well, all of a sudden, they want apples. They often want apples, and they're pressured by people saying, there's a lower entry cost for PCs or for netbooks. Well, now Apple's in the play. This is going to let those schools have those huge one-on-one, -on -one, one computer per student orders. And then look at all the people going to college. Just today, I was assigned a bunch of autographs, and some of the people were actually college students that what they're going to get is an iPad now to go to college next year. You, you could show up, somebody could have a $6,000 HP laptop all decked out and geeked out and everything, and so one other person has the iPad. What's, what are people going to be looking at? And, and just to imagine all the, the multimedia rich textbooks, you know, not just text, but also all the interactivity and the video and the links to the internet and all that stuff. I think that that's a big change for the world, and yes, they're talking that the Wall Street Journal is very expensive, 170 a year or something, but I'm going to order that first thing. I'm going to order the Wall Street Journal and then the free New York Times. <laughs> um, I'm going to, you know, but I'm going to actually try to make this is my, my content. Um, I like content that way. I want, I'm going to give it a try. Are you going to try I'm cold? I'm prejudge it that it's going to be successful, but I'm sure looking. I, I just like the fact that a book looks a little more animated than page disappears and comes back on my Kindle. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, you're known for some pretty famous hacks. Uh, do you plan on hacking your iPad? No. Although people attribute hacks to me, I'm more a prankster. And I really am not one of those hackers that gets into computer systems and never have been. And I, I don't even like to modify. Believe it or not, I don't even, after the first time I did it, I don't like to hack my iPhone even. I like to live, like, know what other people are going through and living with and be one of the mass, one of the normal. I, I want to ask you, though, what is that? You have a really interesting watch there. Yes. 
I get more attention from this watch than any gadget I've ever owned in my life, Nixie tubes. And it's a, it's a, Can you hold a little bit towards the yeah, camera it's, it's a very popular thing to have Nixie tube clocks at home that plug in the wall. This one runs on a battery pumped up to 140 volts for these old style Nixie tubes that aren't even made anymore. And when I turn my wrist, the sensors cause it to display hours, minutes. It just did 739, I think. 739. And it does it. That's great. The way my brain likes it is the way you would speak things. I don't have to parse the hours from the minutes. And that's one of the things, you know, I like about a lot of the voice entry. Like if you use the Google mobile app on your iPhone, it's really great because you can just speak things in almost any order like you would type them into a Google search. And I want to get, I, I hope that computers and phones and iPads go more and more towards in that direction that it's so robust you don't have to say things in a very specific way, a very specific order with every comma perfectly placed. Now, Steve, when you were back in the Homebrew Computer Club and designing the Apple II and, and all, all that, did you guys envision anything like this? Did you ever picture such a uh, you know, rich, animated, graphically heavy, touch-based device? Anyone who was there will tell you no. They might, there were little bits of talk in certain directions that sort of imply going in that way, but to think that there'd ever be enough memory in a computer for a song, to think there'd ever be enough memory for a video frame, it was so far from real at that point in time, you'd never think that many steps of Moore's Law ahead. It's very difficult. So no, we just thought everybody was going to have a computer at their home writing their programs to solve their problems. Very different things happened. Did you plan on writing any programs for this? I sure hope so. I don't have any planned. Um, but I'm going to start getting some ideas. I think I would rather write programs for the iPhone. I think that's more of a challenging, you can do something more important with the tiny screen. With the big screen, you're just writing a program, you might as well be writing it for a computer, except it's a little, little easier. Here's the funny thing. We had a couple of, a few computer platforms, Linux, um, the OS X, and Microsoft and those windows. So you had those platforms and people wrote program after program after program. The people who knew how to write programs, the young people who wanted to write something for once in their life, but we reached, you kind of reach a limit, you get tired. We've kind of sort of done it over and over for too many years. All of a sudden the iPhone was the new platform, you know? And look, and, and, and the success just blew everyone's. I'm sure that Apple never predicted the huge success the, um, the app development kit would have. So I think those developers are hot and on the track and some of them are making money. Some of them aren't making money, but they've got the formula. And the iPad is already starting out with a little bit higher level of cost for the apps. So I think those developers are anxious to say, this is the way I might do it. Or I'll take a program I've already worked on, but I'm gonna put it, this is the first place I'm gonna port it to. But what is your take on the, the closed nature of the app store? Do you think, is that really the model for the future or do you think they'll eventually break down and, and on that? The closed nature of the App Store, uh, since I'm so tied to an iPhone, of course I have all the phones, but if I were tied to an iPhone, I'm sort of limited to certain set of apps that Apple chose. Now, if you take a retail store in this mall, they choose who's, which clothing will be in there. The bookstore chooses what books and what magazines, and they will keep some things out because they are offensive or because we don't want to get into that type of book for some reason. So Apple's App Store is just Apple Store. Can you get apps another way? About the only other way I can think of is the net apps, and they're usually too limited. So I don't totally like it. Um, I, like, I like every machine to be by a clever mind that knows the technology and knows the software, that they can expand it every which way they can and hook little wires in and control them. You know? But I come from that, from that background. Have you played with any uh, Android development, or do you own any Android devices? I own multiple Android devices. Um, I experiment with them. I actually like some of the things on Android devices, some of the things on Palm WebOS devices, and some of the things on, on iPhones. Yeah, very much. And uh, is that a better development, uh, development environment uh, than, than the App Store? Or what do you, okay. where do you think more people are going to flock to? You know, better is a difficult word because the Apple community is, although we're in a tight playpen, Apple gets you into their playpen and keeps you there, there's some advantages to that. Is it good or is it bad? To a person who's very open-minded, oh my gosh, developers should be able to write anything they think of, the mind thinks of. They shouldn't be so constrained. And the Android open um, source stuff is a lot less constrained. So I think it's good. It's good in some ways, but it's bad in others. You know, we've seen every place, almost everywhere in the world, computers can go. And it's time to maybe trust good manufacturers like Apple, the really creative ones, to 
to do it in their own world. If that world ever became so constrained that we were hurting because we're missing apps. You see, I, I look at some things. I could say, whoa, there's a couple things I could do a little easier on the Nexus One phone. Well, you know what? I can do it easy on the Nexus One. I can do it easy on the iPhone. In the end, everything you would want to do with a phone or with a computer like the, like the iPad, you can do easily and nicely even if you think somebody has a better way. So the features aren't going to sell a product. You know, you have to trust that your vendor is going to keep supplying you with good, good follow-on, good follow-on products, good follow-on apps, good support, and that's what Apple has that trust. That's what the brand is all about. You know, I mean, Apple can sell for a little more, and maybe on the specs, they have a little less, it seems. Now, now what do you see, like, uh, 10 years down the road, what is going to be the, uh, the next big revolution uh, in, in this side? What, what's the thing that, we're, that most people aren't seeing coming? Why do you say 10 years? That's so far off. I mean, it could be um, humans are all bionic by then. <laughs> um, Five years then. Just what, what's, the, what's going to be the next iPad, the next thing that changes the way we do uh, personal computing? Wow, I think we're in the middle of it right now. It's all the va basic um, input and output devices. So input, we're getting into all the, the gesturing. And, and for output, we've got a lot of variation in screens. And talking about these flexible organic LED screens now. And what if you could wear one someday? I want to have one on my car and then push a button and my car turns into a cop car. I mean, I want to really have some fun. But, um, you know, yeah, and the input devices, the, all the, you know, you shake the sticks, you point in three-dimensional world. Uh, the sensors are incredible. And I, th I think that's where it's at right now. Sort of like the and augmented look reality? At, look at what a computer does now and look what a computer did even 20 years ago. We kind of have the same tasks in life that we want to get finished. Maybe we want to communicate with other people that we work with, you know, memorandum or whatever. Maybe we want to, um, well, of course, nowadays you listen to music. You didn't do that 20 years ago. <laughs> so, so I don't know. But, uh, um, yeah, where's it going? I, I would, I'm sort of hoping for the day that the hardware all stabilizes and becomes... There's not too much difference in the hardware from year to year. It's one of the things that the tech, but the tech industry loves it because it gives them a better bottom line. You sell something new and people have to have it and buy it. And you come up with something better and they have to have it and buy it. And it keeps the industry moving. It's almost like if we could force them to obsolete the old stuff, we make more money. And that's what keeps the tech industry moving. When it gets sort of static and isn't changing much, those are bad times. What do, you, what do you think about uh, how the iPad and all these new things play into this uh, new media revolution with, uh, like we're doing here with Twit? Uh, I, I know you've been on, on Twit a lot of times, spoken a lot with Leo. Um, is this, this going to help with all that? I don't, I, th I think it is going to help. I think it's going to put a device in people's hands wherever they are that they can use for Twit. And things like the mobile smartphones are just too small of a screen sometimes to get the full enjoyment that the web is really designed for. Okay. Well, so I, would, I would, I would, yeah, I would really hope so. Although, you know, a lot of the the new world, a lot of the Web 2.0 stuff, you really do with, um, um, you do with fine with your phone. Yeah. So it's it's hard. It's hard to predict. I'm not. I'm not a futurist. I'm not really trying to look out. Oh my gosh! And make all these strange predictions. And some a rare one might be true. And the rest are are just predictions. Well, Steve, thanks so much. I'll let you get back in line. Um, are you so? Are you going to be here all night? Yes, and it's hard and it's painful. I've done it before three times, three times for iPhones. By the way, as soon as I arrived, the few people in front of me in line, just like they did every other time, said, we want you to sit in front of us. The store said, we want you to go in first. And I said, no, because, it, you know, it's, it's impolite. I would like to say, oh, yes, you want me to, I will. I'll be polite to you. But then all these blogs write that I'm, I'm cutting in line. But my big joke is, hey, man, those people in front of me better walk, not turn their back. <laughs> Dana saying, show us your chair. Do you have a special chair? Yes. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay, we're going to walk over now. We're going to look at uh, Steve Wozniak's chair. Number four in, I'm number 40 in line because the other line gets 10 times. The pre-orders get 10, 10 people in for one in our line. But my chair's right here. I've got my Scott E-Vest with the pockets full of um, smartphones and things. And this is my chair, which is off of my car. There it is, my Hummer. But I drive a Prius, but I love the chair. And, and this chair... I, I didn't bring a blanket or a sleeping bag or anything. I have my backpack full of all my computer stuff, so I might pull out my laptop in the night and email a few people, a few friends. You have a lot of batteries, or do, do, is Apple going to let you plug in here? Well, they, they actually do have power, and I expect with the built-in battery, I'm not going to have enough time to run the battery down. 
It's the, you know, it's the unibody computer. The battery goes a long time for me. That's and what right. happens is I actually get um, uh, all night long, people are coming up, even when the mall is empty, it's only the people in line. Oh, will you sign this to me? Will you talk to me about this? I don't get enough, very much time to use my computer on these nights. That's great. I'm sure they really appreciate it. And I know we certainly do. So Steve Wozniak, thank you so much. Well, this is a real thrill to do this with you. I mean, <laughs> oh, live It's a thrill to meet you. Oh my goodness. Let's, you know, somebody's keeping this world moving forward. We have an iPad app already developed, Colleen says, so people will soon be able to watch Twitch streaming on the iPad. Read about that. Read about that. I'll get that. I'll get that app as soon as I can. That's great. Well, <laughs> yes. yes, it'll be online shortly. All right, so thank you, Steve Wozniak, and thank you to Ustream for providing us with their Ustream pack. Uh, Colleen is wearing it right now, and that's what's streaming this to you live right now. Uh, I'm Eric Lanigan, and stay tuned tonight and pretty much all day tomorrow. And for probably the next week uh, for more continuing iPad coverage.